Hi, I'm Tom Gustafson, Computer Information Systems Instructor at Lake Superior College in Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome to this fourth video in a series on imaging a Windows 7 computer. We've already answered this question, what is computer imaging? It's creating a complete image of a Windows installation. And this complete image goes in a .wim file. We use the ImageX utility to do it, and that's what we're going to do in this video, is create that image. We've been using these resources, the Windows 7 Enterprise Evaluation and the Windows Automated Installation Kit. The steps to image a computer, we've gone through three of them, install and prepare a Windows image, download the automated installation kit, and we've created the Windows PE ISO file so that we can boot our virtual machine to the Windows PE environment. In this video, we're going to create a WIM image of a system, then we're going to partition a computer for that will be the destination computer the image will be applied to, and then we're going to actually distribute or apply that image to that computer. We already saw the steps to prepare a system for imaging and running the SysPrep program to generalize it. We also saw how to download the Windows Automated Installation Kit and install it. And in our last video, we created a Windows PE boot ISO file so that we could boot to the Windows PE environment and run the ImageX utility. Now we're ready to use ImageX to create a WIM image of a system. We've already booted our virtual machine to Windows PE. We did that in the last video. And now we're ready to run ImageX. This is the utility we'll use. And we want to create a WIM file that's an image of our Windows 7 computer. Here's the command to do it. We run imagex.exe. This command specifies that it's on the E drive. You have to look at your configuration and see if these drive letters are correct. Slash capture means we want to capture an image, make a copy of an image. And C colon is where that image is located. We're going to make an image of that entire drive. D colon backslash myimage.wim. This is the destination. This is the drive letter and the name of the file that we will create that is the image of the C drive. We can give the image a name. So in quotation marks, put what you wish here. I call it Windows 7 image. And this option to compress um, allows you to choose the type of compression that you use. The compression um, is optional. If you leave it out, there will be no compression at all. Fast compression means the imaging will go faster, but the actual image you create will be larger. You can have no compression at all if you wish as well. Slash verify means to verify this image, check for duplicate file names and for errors. So again, this uh, your drive letters may be different. This example assumes that E is your CD drive that you've, you've booted from Windows PE. Uh, E is that CD drive, C is the drive on which Windows 7 installed, and D is the drive where you want to store your WIM image. Your exact configuration may be slightly different than that. In fact, mine is going to be. I'll show you why. So here we're back on our virtual machine. I've booted to Windows PE. I'm going to type C colon and do a DIR here, and you'll notice C colon is a uh, is my system drive. It's a 100 megabyte system drive that's created on Windows 7 installations. I don't really care about that drive, so I'm not going to use it. If I do a DIR of my D drive, notice I have a users and a program files. This is my Windows 7 installation. There's my Windows directory. So I want to make an image of my D drive. If I type E colon and do a DIR, notice here I have boot, boot manager, EFI, image x.exe, sources. That's my Windows PE disk. And now I'm going to also show you my F drive. My F drive is a flash drive that I have inserted into my system. And, I, and you can see it down here in the lower right-hand corner. This is actually my um, flash drive that I have connected to a virtual, my virtual machine. So let's run our ImageX program, and here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to go to E as my default drive. Because E is my default drive, I don't have to type it, but I'll type E colon backslash image X. 
and I don't have to type the .exe, but you see that a lot in the commands, the way they're written. The slash capture option means I'm capturing an image, I'm creating an image, and the Windows drive now is D colon. The example I showed you in the slide showed the Windows drive is C colon, so you have to be flexible here. You have to know your drive letters, and you have to know which is which. I'm going to actually store my image out on the F drive, and I'll just call it win 7 wim I'm going to call it, uh, in quotation marks, my image will have a name, Windows 7 install, and then I'll give the compress option, and I will give, I'll use fast compression, which means it'll go fast, but the image will be a little bigger um, than it would be otherwise, and verify means to check for file name, duplicate files and errors. And I press enter, and off it goes. Now this is going to be about a, almost a three gigabyte image that is created of this Windows 7 system, so it's going to take a little bit to do this installation. While the installation is happening, here's what I can think about. I, after I create this image, it's going to be stored on a flash drive, I want to deploy this image. I want to push it out to a brand new system. So while I'm waiting for my image to happen, here's what I'll do. I'll create, go to file, and I'll create a new virtual machine. Um, I could just, I could use a physical machine as well with a blank hard drive, but uh, here's what I'll do. I will say when I create my new virtual machine, I'll install the operating system later. It's going to be Microsoft, it's going to be Windows 7, and um, I will call um, I'll just call this Windows 7 imaged, just because I, it's a Windows 7 that was pushed out with an image. And, um, oh, I guess I've already used that file name. I'll call, call it ImageX, Windows 7 ImageX. I'll make it a 20 gig hard drive, and I'll finish it off. So I have a brand new virtual machine. It doesn't have Windows installed. It has a 20 gig hard drive, but the hard drive is completely blank. It's not even formatted. So what I need to do now is um, I need to create the, the partitions and uh, get this disk ready for deployment. Let's take a quick look back at my imaging and notice I'm only 4% done with my Windows 7 image. Okay, in my VM settings, then, I'm going to need to um, boot this blank virtual machine to something, and of course, a logical choice would be to boot this to a Windows PE CD. So I can go out here to my Windows PE and um, use that image file, and the other thing I do, if I want to boot to a CD, I need to make sure that my BIOS is configured to check the CD for at boot up. So I'm going to go to VM power and power onto BIOS. And it'll come up in the BIOS here and I will look at my boot options and configure it to make sure my CD is high. So I'll press right arrow three times, down arrow twice, the plus sign twice to move the CD-ROM drive up, F10 to save the changes, and enter to exit. And there we are, loading files. We're booting now to Windows PE, and we will now be able to format the hard drive in this empty vir virtual machine. Remember, the hard drive has nothing on it. It's not partitioned, it's not formatted, it has nothing on it at all. In order to do this, I am going to use the disk part utility. It's a partitioning utility that's used at the command line. Again, uh, the command line is really important when you're doing these kind of things. Many people are accustomed today to the graphical environment, but being familiar with the command line is extremely useful. So the more you learn about the command line, the better off you'll be doing a lot of these administrative type things in supporting Microsoft Windows. Um, the command line is alive and well, and in some ways it's becoming more important with time. So we're booted up into Windows PE on our blank virtual machine. 
let's go back and take a quick look at our imaging. It's still at 13%. So let's start back on our empty virtual machine. Let's start the disk part utility. Just type disk part and press enter. And then we're going to select disk zero. We only have one physical hard disk and disks are numbered starting at zero. We'll type the clean uh, command which cleans the disk and then we're going to create a partition. Create partition. It's going to be a primary partition and its size is going to be 100 megabytes. Now remember that Windows 7 requires two partitions. The active partition is going to be a small one, 100 megabytes in size that actually has the boot files on it. So and then the actual Windows installation will be the, the uh, boot partition that has the operating system files on it. That'll be the remainder of my drive. So the first partition we create is 100 megabytes in size and partitions are numbered starting at 1. So we'll say select partition 1. That's the one I just created and we'll format that partition with the NTFS file system and we'll give it a label system. And that's going to be our 100 megabyte system partition that contains all the boot files. Recall that Windows has a strange naming system. Uh, the system partition has the boot files and the boot partition has the system files. It's backwards, but that's the way Microsoft does it. We'll sign it, the drive letter C. And we type the active command, which makes that partition the active partition on that disk. So the drive C, the 100 megabyte NTFS system partition is now the active partition. Now we're going to create a second tar partition. It's going to be a primary partition, but we're not going to specify the size. And um, that's going to, um, oh, I left out an R there. That's going to use the remainder of the disk since I didn't specify a size. And this is going to be partition number two. The first one was number one. So we'll select that as our current partition and then we'll format it. And since this is going to be the partition that stores the Windows operating system, we'll format it as NTFS and give it the label Windows. And that formatting will take a little bit. While that happens, let's go back to our imaging and we see that the image is about 26% done right now. So it's going to take a little bit. After this drive is formatted, we're just going to assign it the drive letter D and exit, and then we will be done partitioning our system. I'll pause the video after I do that, and we'll wait for the imaging to finish up, and then we can push this image out to our blank virtual machine to see how that process works. So we're almost done here with the format command. Then we're going to assign our petition the drive letter D. almost there. Um, realize that when I selected partition 2, that means the commands I execute after I select that partition automatically apply to partition 2. So the format command, I didn't say which partition to format, it assumes it's partition 2. Same thing here. When I say assign letter, letter equals D, I didn't say which partition to assign letter D to, it's assumed that it's partition 2 because I selected partition 2 up there. So, uh, um, oh, a specified drive letter is not free to be assigned. Okay, well, um, I'm not going to assign it a letter then. I will just leave that alone and, uh, well, maybe I'll assign it letter E just for fun. There we go. And uh, I will exit. Okay, we're done partitioning uh, the disks on our virtual machine. We'll wait for our imaging to complete. I'll stop the video and then we will continue on.